My journey to Strong Towns began with this video from Not Just Bikes. But we don't want to raise our kids in an environment like this. In fact, before Chuck Marone coined the word strode, it touched on something I wasn't able to quite describe, but something I felt every day, especially as I was living in Phoenix. With conversations in our apartment happening around timelines with kids, I was finally able to narrow it down. Why were there no kids playing in the street? The more I read, the more frustrated I got. This was part of the reason we decided to move to Chicago. You see, I grew up in a suburb that had really quiet streets, but was still compact enough for my friends and I to bike to everyone's place, even if they weren't an immediate neighbor. I know this sounds like nostalgic boomer talk, but I'm 26. I grew up in the 2000s. This is the street where I learned to ride my bike. This is the place we would walk or ride to meet up and watch a movie. The design of the streets here have a message. These streets belong to people. Humans exist here. Strong Towns is not anti-suburb. There are plenty of financially resilient suburbs. Ones where businesses are within a short bike ride, kids can easily navigate their way to a friend's house, and there are interesting third places to hang out. Unfortunately though, the best of these have been grandfathered in. Being built before traffic throughput was put before the safety and comfort of those living in the neighborhoods themselves. These traditional developments were places for people to live and platforms to build wealth. Now, most North American developments are dangerous places to experience outside of a car. I think of Grapevine, Texas, where there's a gorgeous train station and public plaza across the tracks from their main street, which has puny sidewalks and two to three lanes of 30 mile per hour road cutting it in half. We built this problem. We can also change it. Hi friends, I'm Mike, video producer for Strong Towns, and this video is going to show you what a good street looks like and what you can do to make safer streets where you live. When someone mentions dangerous streets, the stereotype might be to think of a place in the middle of a crime map hotspot. In reality, the safety of a street has less to do with the activity around it as much as it has to do with its design. Forgiving Design tried to address that. It tried to address the typical mistakes that drivers make. We develop standards to make highways safe, wider lanes, shoulder buffers, clear zones, and we brought those insights to city streets where they have the opposite effect. The trends aren't looking good. While pedestrian fatalities have been going up in recent years, in 2021, they had the highest amount in 40 years. 2022's preliminary data suggests that it got even worse. If speed is the determining factor on whether someone dies on the street or lives to see another day, then it's time for us to start advocating for real changes. While I'm not one myself, I know that any parent dreads the sound of a car screech right outside of their house. This is why parents petition for children live here signs, try to put in stop signs and install speed bumps. Yet, even with the knowledge that these design standards lead to higher chances of crashes involving children, we still hesitate to give any kind of inconvenience to motorists driving in our neighborhoods. This mindset, this rigidity and callousness, it's not okay. We deserve safer streets. We deserve access to places when outside of a car. So how do we get that? We're gonna use Chicago as an example. We've got complex and vibrant streets, those grandfathered in suburbs I was talking about, City Nerd likes us, and Stuart Hicks is here. Hey, you're Stuart Hicks, right? I am, I am, yeah. Um, I know you want to collaborate, but if we could just do that another time, please. This seems counterintuitive, but complexity makes streets safe. If a street feels confusing to drive in, even dangerous, then that means that drivers will slow down. Slower speeds mean safer neighborhoods. Most North Americans drive and all North Americans want safe streets. Those two things aren't incompatible. The thing that is, is high speeds. Good streets take drivers from passive driving to a more heightened awareness of their surroundings. A good way to think of this is the idea of systems of the mind as described by Daniel Kahneman in Thinking Fast and Slow. System one is an automatic fast reaction system. We don't have to pause to come up with a solution in system one, we simply know the answer, like two plus two equals four. In this kind of passive driving, you can sing along to your favorite music and sip your coffee. A road you can think of as a replacement for the railroad. Think of it as a road on rails, right? You get on in one spot, you get off in another spot, and there's a high-speed connection between the two. The value of a road is in that high-speed connection between two places that people wanna be. System two is activated when we come across complexity. 
This requires more focus and mental effort. A street will naturally be safe if it's designed to keep drivers in system too. In a good street environment, the street is narrower and the sidewalks are wider. There are tighter turns. This makes a place where people spend money and linger. It's hard to go window shopping from behind the wheel of a car. Lincoln Square is a great example of this. You see the bollards, the raised crosswalk, the people walking around. This all makes me pay more attention and puts me in system too. When we try to both move traffic quickly and create wealth in the same environments, we wind up with strodes. Places where drivers are moving quickly, signaled by the design to be in system one, paying less attention to the place around them. With cutouts, wide lanes, and billboards, we've signaled to drivers that highway speeds are acceptable in places where there are tons of potential conflict points. So we put in traffic signals and stop signs. We put in things that slow you down, so we get neither convenience nor places to build wealth. Even though we've invested tons of money to move cars, the cars don't move. While a place like Lincoln Square should definitely bring someone into system too, most streets should just naturally slow cars so people can drive in system one with a wider field of view and the ability to brake and pay attention if something comes up. So how do we come back from these absurd and expensive mistakes that we built our cities around? Like we mentioned, complexity is important, but it's not the whole solution. Randomness combined with high vehicle speeds makes strodes deadly. Vox did a great piece on this that you should definitely check out. Turning a bad strode into a good road is pretty simple. You make less access points and you keep cyclists and pedestrians separate from vehicles. Turning a strode into a street takes a little bit more work and self-reflection. Most of us are used to being able to drive anywhere we want, often at dangerous speeds and park directly in front of our destination. Our places have been designed around the car. So it takes a big mindset shift to imagine streets oriented around human beings. If you're gonna coax people back outside and create spaces that prioritize the human experience, you're gonna to wanna to be selective about where to start. Jeff Speck, author of Walkable City, says that sprinkling pedestrianization everywhere doesn't really do much. So where do you start? I feel like some unofficial marks of a good place are that kids are hanging out outside and the bike racks are full. Jeff Speck also says you've gotta pick your winners. Basically, don't waste your time and money beautifying a street if it's not convenient for anyone to walk or bike there. I'll show you two suburbs in Chicagoland that are in this process right now. I bet your town is in a similar place as well. I'd love to hear your comments on what you think is gonna work. Also, feel free to subscribe before we move to the next section. First, we have Romeoville, a suburb southwest of Chicago who doesn't have an official downtown because they bet on this strode being the place for people to hang out and spend money. They've been developing what they call Uptown Square right here. As you can see, it'll be cut off from the surrounding neighborhoods and right off of a major highway. If I had to guess, and I will, I don't think you're going to be seeing full bike racks and people walking to this spot. Villa Park, a suburb just west of Elmhurst, has a major strode that they bet on years ago as well. They're starting to focus their developments on this spot right here. Sure, it's not right off the highway for convenient access from out-of-towners, but this is going to be a place for people in Villa Park to linger and enjoy, with a bike path, park, future recreation center, and easy access to surrounding neighborhoods. Villa Park is setting itself up for success. Now the only question is whether they keep up these changes. To make a street safer and more inviting, we're gonna need to lower the speed of cars. Lowering the speed limits with signage doesn't change the design itself. This can actually make streets more dangerous if it promises safety, but delivers a raceway. When roads were empty in early 2020, it became clear that some roads were only slow because of congestion. The natural speed told people to go fast. So people drove faster. Enforcement policies are also tough because they only address the symptoms, but not the causes. When we signal to drivers that it's okay to drive fast, and then they go out and drive fast, that is not an enforcement issue. That's not an issue for the police to handle. Police enforcement via ticketing and traffic stops isn't experienced the same way in communities with a fraught and violent history with the police in the same way that affluent and white neighborhoods do. They also could theoretically be used as a predatory, fine-based way of funding local government. Once the police leave, then people start speeding again. 
Strong Towns member Zachary Staggs found this when he did a speed study in El Paso. 80% of drivers were back to speeding after enforcement stopped. Clearly the design was telling them that they could drive faster. So whose fault is that? The best, most proven way to curb speeding and create platforms for congregation and for developing wealth is through design. A Strong Towns approach accommodates automobiles in a place dominated by people. Create spaces where it's physically uncomfortable, even impossible to drive fast, and you're also going to create places for your town to flourish. These local issues are best solved at the local level by people who know their neighborhoods. Bike Grid Now, which started less than a year ago in Chicago, has been doing some great things, and we want to highlight what they're up to. Chicago Bike Grid Now is a grassroots collective of safe streets, pedestrian, transportation, and cycling and bike rider advocates. Uh, but all of us have this common goal of being able to move and travel throughout the city safely. And what that looks like for our group is that 10% of Chicago streets are capped at 10 miles per hour. We'd start with rapid deployment of temporary affordable infrastructure just to calm the traffic. Um, and then follow up with the more permanent infrastructure, which would include things like planners, jersey barriers, traffic diverters, chicanes, curbs, bump outs, etc. They've been endorsed by tons of alders and both candidates in the runoff for mayor. A step that you can take to make your street safer, as well as demonstrate need to your local government, is using tactical urbanism. All across the country, people have shown that cheap, easy, and fast pilot projects can show a city that traffic calming works. We aren't advocating for you to do anything dangerous or invasive. We'll leave some guides in the description so you can see what others have done. There is a nonprofit based out of Dallas, Texas called Better Block. They help communities realize how they can change their built environments and make their streets safer. This footage is from Kenmore Street in Akron, Ohio. This year, they're celebrating their fifth anniversary of making changes by repainting the lines and having a block party. These things are really hard to do alone, so it's a good thing you don't have to. If you join a local conversation, you can meet up with people in your city who are getting involved at no cost. Our members get access to office hours where you can ask questions about theory and practice to our staff weekly. Ultimately though, there are tons of free resources to help you get started on our website and from other creators here. So don't feel pressured to spend money on getting educated unless you really want to dive deeper. Also, subscribe so you can bookmark and see our videos in the future. I'll leave you with this. Improving a place is a lot harder than it should be. We at Strong Towns believe that the best way to implement solutions is you, in your communities, making the next smallest step you can to improve your place. What might that be for you?